Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at Epic 7 Arise, which finished on Kickstarter earlier this year, but they sent me a prototype of one of the scenarios to try out. And I'll be honest, I've had a bit of difficulty with it. The rules aren't very clear, their answers have helped somewhat, but I think there might be some translation issues. And I've also found the gameplay to have some problems that I think they can definitely still address in the development, but I wanted to call out. So this is an unusual one for me, because usually when I do Kickstarter coverage, I refuse to cover a game if I don't enjoy it, because I don't want to kind of be the downer in a campaign. But looking on the Kickstarter page for this one, so many people were asking for any kind of gameplay video that I thought I would do my best to help out. Although again, I guarantee I'm playing some things wrong, because it's just kind of hard to tell what's going on with some parts of this. And as always, we accept no compensation for our Kickstarter coverage, we just want to help you make an informed decision. And for this one, uh, yeah, uh, stay for the end of the video after the playthrough, or use the timestamps to skip if you want to hear my thoughts on what they might want to address. So first, to give an overview of the game, Epic 7 is an app JRPG, Japanese role-playing game. I tried it out, it's very much pay-to-play, and uh, they want your money in every little facet of the game. Definitely not my bag, so I didn't play it much. But uh, one of the cool things is that it does seem to have a stronger story than most of these kind of app-based games. And the gist of what I got is that this Raz or Raz guy... He's like this foretold hero, but when he tried to stop this big demon from invading and destroying the Earth, he basically totally failed, and now he's getting a second chance, but everyone's angry at him because he let them down. Now, theoretically, you can play the game with one player controlling two heroes, or uh, two players, or three players, but to call it the first of many issues you'll hear about as I play, the balance is totally off in some ways for lower player count games. So I'm going to try to muddle through controlling all four characters. But the basic idea of gameplay is that you have these map tiles, and you'll see that our characters are on these tiles that are numbered, like this guy's 2 to 3, uh, she's a 1, this one's a 4, this guy's 5 to 6. And that's going to determine how often different enemies attack us, so the people that are on spaces with multiple values are more likely to be targeted. But we're going to fight one other tile at a time. Now, from what I can gather in most of the scenarios, it's kind of more of a progressive thing, where you keep on going, like, from tile to tile to tile. But this one is kind of more of a tower defense scenario, where guys are going to keep on popping up and spawning and spawning on these spaces, and we need to try to keep their numbers down until the boss finally shows up. Now, how exactly does combat go? We've got all of the enemy types for this scenario with their relative speeds. They're actually on the value, so, like, these mouse guides are six, and, uh, you know, this big rock guy is a two, and this kind of froggy dude is a one. And the characters also have speed ratings, and I put the meeples that match their base color there to mark where their speed is. So the enemies and allies will take turns as the speed kind of counts down. And on Hero's turn, we can uh, go ahead and look at Mercedes's first. They'll have five cards from their starting deck of ten skill cards. And these cards are very straightforward. They have a value one through six, and they're either red or blue. And each character has three attacks they can use, skill one, skill two, and skill three. And these require putting certain combinations of numbers into your play area. A pair of any number will activate your skill one. A run of three numbers in a row, one, two, three, three, four, five, four, five, six, will activate skill two. And three of a kind will activate skill three. The color does not matter, you can use whatever color you want. But the color does matter after you do the skill, because immediately after resolving your skill, for every blue card you played, you get to draw another card from your deck, so you can kind of combo into more skill use. Whereas for every red card you've played by the end of your entire turn, you get these souls on your character that are going to give you the ability to boost your skills later. And to show you what I mean, Mercedes' Divine Bolt, remember that would take a pair, it's her skill one, would deal one damage to two different targets. But for one soul, again earned from playing red cards in previous rounds, she can convert that into a magical attack which will bypass armor on the enemy. And that's really the basic idea of the hero turn. You can also spend souls to take a card from another player. Because even though we do only solo and co-op here, uh, this game does kind of have some semi-cooperative elements. You can sort of ignore them, but they're certainly there. Meanwhile, enemy turns are as simple as can be. They just do whatever they say, generally dealing some amount of damage. Uh, sometimes if they're on a space with a certain colored dragon icon, they'll get some extra bonus power. And they have this attack target deck. You have two taken out randomly, and then you go through the rest until they're exhausted. There's two of each value, one through six. And whenever an enemy targets a hero, you just flip one, and here they would target the hero on space six. And you can see what's come, so you'll kind of know your odds of who's going to get hit where as the deck goes through. 
Now, from what I can tell, in most scenarios, you'll keep on going through combat rounds until either the heroes are defeated or until all of the enemies are. But this is, again, kind of a special defensive scenario in that after each round you stop fighting, you spawn more guys, and you have a penalty if there's ever three or more guys, I think... I'm kind of having trouble understanding these encounter tokens, but that's what I gather. If I let, uh, by the end of the round, there are three or more guys on a single space, then I'm going to trigger the negative thing on the encounter token, which in this case would make each of us lose two souls, and we would get a skull, which will make all the other story cards kind of be worse for the rest of the scenario, so you don't want to lose these. Whereas if I can defeat every monster on a given space, I take this away and I get the bonus, which is usually crystals or adding a card to my deck. And speaking of adding cards, at the end of each round, I'll have these uh, gems. We start with two per character. And for one gem, I can buy a skill card. I draw three and I pick one of them and add it to my deck. And then I shuffle my entire deck and draw five new cards. But that'll help me fine-tune my deck composition so I can make three of a kind more possible for my skill number three. So I can keep drawing with a bunch of blue cards to get bigger turns, doing my skills over and over again. Now, it doesn't say you can buy artifact cards in this scenario, but usually they cost uh, two gems instead of one. Although I think that's what the reward is for these encounters. Maybe, I'm not sure, we'll find out. But those are the basics of gameplay for Epic Seven, at least as well as I understand them. So let's jump in and show off some rounds. So for round one, there's uh, two guys here, one guy there, one guy there. And even though miniatures aren't really my thing, I do think the miniatures are pretty great here. Although looking at the female depiction, they pull from the worst tropes in anime. I hate this stuff in anime, but <laughs> we'll save that for my final thoughts. But anyway, yeah, we're going to attack the place with the rock monster and this little toad dude. So first turn is green, which is Mercedes. And you already saw her Divine Bolt hits two people. Her Dimensional Rupture also hits two targets, but for two damage each, pretty great. And then Blazing Eye of Call also does two damage to two targets, but it's magical, which again means it'll be armor piercing. I have no souls at the moment, so I can't boost any of these. And let's see, I've got two threes, two fours, and a six. I'd like to draw more and hopefully get a better combo. So let's go ahead and start out with a pair of threes to activate her skill one, doing one damage to two different targets. Now the rock guys have four life and no defense, but the toad, I'm not sure why he's so much tougher than a giant rock guy, has six life and one defense. So she's not going to do any damage to him because it's not magical. It's not going to pierce through his one armor. and She's only doing one damage, but she'll take the rock guy down to three out of four life. And they have pretty cool things for tracking life in the game that I haven't seen before. They have like these uh, tokens showing the different monsters. What are these guys called? Rubetta. Awesome. And you can actually rotate it so he's down to three life, swanky. All right, because Mercedes played a blue card, she gets to draw a card. Ooh, four, five, six. Yes, that'll let her do her dimensional rupture. Remember, it's straights that let you do skill number two, so four, five, six. And after we resolve the attack, we'll get another draw for the blue card. So there's two damage to two different targets, so even our mud fluxes, one armor won't be enough. He's going to go down to five life. And blink, there we go. Whereas our Rubetta is almost defeated. All right, from the blue card, Mercedes gets to draw another card, but we don't have a pair or three of a kind or three in a row. So we're gonna have to stop there, but she did play three red cards. So she'll get three souls to her supply. The max is 10, which will give her much more interesting decisions with her attacks next turn. All right, now Raz and Luna are tied for five speed. The enemies have speed two and one, so they're gonna go after all of us. I have Luna colored purple and Raz yellow, so I'm gonna roll off. I think that's what you do when they're tied. So Raz will go before Luna. And his skills are honestly a bit dull until you get some souls. He does one damage with X-Slash, one damage with Command Strike, two to everybody with Sword of the Air, which will honestly be a lot better when we're fighting more than two monsters. But again, the souls will make it more interesting. We don't have them yet. <laughs> Look at this. He's got all blue and three sixes. Oh, great, for his Sword of the Air, you need three of a kind. And by the way, these uh, 10 card starting decks are randomly drawn from the overall skill cards. You can do a redraw, kind of a mulligan, if you don't like the composition once, but I didn't care. I just wanted to see how things turned out. So, uh, yes, let's go ahead and do Sword of the Air for two damage to everybody, and he'll get to draw three cards in a second. So that's going to straight up kill our friend the Rubetta and just do one damage to this frog again. we got to get past that armor. And each enemy has a reward when you kill them. Uh, these three give you those crystals, and the little mice and the frogs let you heal for three. Because normally you would heal after encounters and after fights in some cases, but in this scenario you can't get any potions. Uh, if you die, you stay dead, which is also normally not the case. So it's again like kind of breaking a lot of the rules that would normally be in place. All right, Raz, apparently fate is on your side. Let's see, we get a two, and another two. Oh my gosh, we can do this sort of the air again. And a one. Well, yes. <laughs> no good reason not to do it, right? Let's do another three of a kind. We'll get to draw another card or two cards for the blues. And it's going to bring the mud flux down to three. 
And now another reason you want to add more cards to your deck is because you can eventually get them all. And let's see, I got three, three, four. Now, the pair of threes will just do one damage, so it's not going to be doing anything to the actual monster. But it'll get an extra red card in play, which, remember, will get me some more souls. Man, he only got two souls total. So much blue in his deck. Uh, so, yeah, two souls for him. Let's not forget his third crystal for killing that guy. All right, now Luna, our inappropriately dressed friend, is up. She does one damage with her level one, boosts all of the attacks for her entire turn by plus one with her skill two, the straight one, or just deals two damage to an enemy with skill number three. And let's see what she got. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like we're going to do skill number two. So four, five, six for the run. That'll boost her attacks by plus one for the rest of the turn. She only gets a single card draw, though. Oh, look at her luck. Okay, so she's going to play a pair of ones that would normally only do one damage, but now it's boosted to two. So we have gotten the Mud Flux down to two life left, but she's only got a six left. She played one blue, so nothing doing here, but she did get three souls. All right, and our last guy is Crowd. Just one damage for his level one, two damage with his level two, three damage with his level three, and look, this one doesn't need souls. Instead, you can discard up to two extra red skill point cards just to add one damage for each, so he could do five damage. I doubt that he'll get three of a kind. Raz having two on his turn was kind of crazy. Oh, we've got two pairs, though. So if I play the pair of fours, maybe I'll get lucky and get another two. So I'll play these and draw two cards. I'm doing Sword Storm for one damage, which is useless against the guy's armor. Oh, 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 look at this. Look at this. So with three of a kind, uh, two reds and a blue, I summon Siegfried for three damage. Uh, the guy's got two life left, so that'll finish off the other enemy. It looks like I'm getting two souls. I'm actually not sure if I get to play more cards after they're all dead. I'm going to guess not. I don't know. So killing this guy would let me heal up to three damage, but nobody took any because they never went. But I believe that since we defeated everybody on that space, we get to resolve the positive effect of the encounter token, which I think means that either the person who scored the most points gets a gem. I think that's right. But here's the thing. Usually the monsters would tell you in these banners how many points you get for defeating them. So you can have that kind of semi-cooperative competition to uh, get the most points and get the reward. But they just have their individual rewards here and don't give me any points. So I don't know who gets that extra gem. We'll say Crow does. Who knows? Because <laughs> he struck the killing blow. Okay, now we're going to the end of the round. None of the enemies got to attack. We uh, defeated them all. But we would look if any location has three or more monsters. It doesn't, so we don't trigger the fail effect for any of those encounter tiles. But we do, per these special rules for the scenario, uh, get to purchase new skill cards with those crystals, and we can change our position, although nobody got hurt, so not much reason to worry about that. And by the way, this is the friendship track. Uh, the person who has the lowest hit points goes to the front. person with the most hit points goes to the back. You roll off when it's tied. And this is how you can take cards from other players' hands, like I mentioned. Uh, if you're at the front, it costs you two souls, three for the two in the middle, four at the back. You pick any other player, you take a card from their hand, but you both get the benefit, like you both gain a soul from it or whatever. But that's a good way to, like, get those three of a kind or straights that you're trying for by taking the exact card you need from your partner. So on that topic, let's do some quick buying. Everyone's got two gems, and Roz and Crow have three. Let's look at what Mercedes has. She has a one, two threes, one four, no, two fours, two five, oh, three fives, and two sixes. So I guess more three, four, five, or six would help her the most. So remember, for each crystal, you draw three cards. Oh, that's pretty good. I guess I'll go for the card draw first. And apparently they want you to put the skill cards you didn't take back on top of the deck without changing their order. So for her second crystal buy, I guess you'll see mostly the same stuff. Oh, man. All right, we'll go for another five and just really double down on getting her uh, Blazing Eye of Cal power off. Meanwhile, Raz, we basically saw all of his cards. He's got three twos, a pair of threes, and three sixes. So I guess, like, some fives and fours to maybe create some runs, but then also more twos and sixes would help get more three of a kind. And he's got three gems, so sure, we'll go with the six. And then uh, we'll go with the five, I guess, has card draw. And hmm, I guess go with the four to maybe get some runs. And I'm not showing it, but I'm going to shuffle these all in with their existing cards, and they'll draw a new hand of five cards before we uh, have the next fight round. Okay, Luna's got two gems. She's got three ones, interesting. Two, a three, a four, a five, and three sixes, so very uh, weighted toward either end. To that, I think she'll get the blue one for her first buy. I guess the red one, although I kind of like her skill that boosts all her damage, and that's a run, not three of a kind. But doing two damage with Ragnar Spear is not bad, so here we go. All right, and Krau's got three gems. Let's see, one, three twos, a three, two fours, a five, and two sixes. So I guess twos and then run seem really good for him. All right, um, 
I guess I'll get the two even though it's red. I'd rather blues to start. And then I'd rather go for the one over another red card. Oh, that's right. He's got one more gem. Oh, there we go. Another two. Sure. All right, and that uses up all of my gems. And since those were all the starting ones, we each got two. Until we kill monsters, we won't have any more. So we probably won't have to spend as much time leveling in the future. I remember a special rule for this scenario. At the end of each round, we're going to flip a new card. And the theme of this is that the monsters are supposed to be attacking this, like, crystal. But, you know, you're just fighting, so it doesn't really mean anything. So we got a new frog over here. Some, like, little clawy guy and a rock guy over here. Another little clawy guy here. Looks like they are Naga. Very nice. So that means now we've got two new enemies here. And a friend to boost both of these guys. And nobody new showed up at our first target. And let's see. The Naga have eight life. They still aren't fast enough to go before my heroes because heroes uh, break ties in speed. They deal four damage to one target. And if they're on a red dragon space, they also make the target discard one skill card. But they get us gems. And I mean, with no armor, I think eight damage is actually not that bad. So, let's see. Both of these are identical. This one's got a red dragon, so it would trigger a special power. But again, I don't expect that to come into play, so sure, let's try to kill these guys. All right, Mercedes will be first, and now that she has some souls, let's look at her abilities. So, for one soul, her basic attack can be magical and go through armor, although neither of these guys have it. For one soul, after I do two damage to two targets, if the target is below three after the attack, I'll return one skill point card from your action area to your hand. That's pretty nice. And finally, this one is super expensive. Ooh, it's also magical. Huh, did I do that? No, I don't think I ever did this one. But yeah, look, if I get six souls saved up, I can deal an extra X damage, where X is equal to the number of blue skill point cards in my action area. And I feel like she has a lot of blue skills. So that could be awesome against the boss or some big, tough mob. But let's see what she's got. Just a pair of fives to start. Not fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and use it, though. So that's one damage to two different targets. We don't need to make it magical with a soul. So the Naga's down to seven, Rebetta to three. And she gets one draw from the blue. Okay, all right, she can do that one again. I don't want to use souls to steal from my friends yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Two sixes. That'll get us another draw. Might as well do it now. Okay, so we will have to take a card from a friend in a second. These guys each tick down one level. So the question is, does she want to take a card from somebody since she's the highest on the friendship track? It only costs her two souls. Or does she just want to hang on to her souls and save up for, like, the blazing eye of Kal? I think, uh, I think she'll stop for now. So, uh, yeah, let's just call her turn done. And she did get two more souls. She'll leave it to the other characters to clean up here. All right, Luna and Raz, let's see who goes first. It is Raz again. And he's got two souls. On his X slash, he can spend up to two souls for plus one damage each. Command strike, he can draw two skill points from any player's hand, and then you give them back to that player. It's pretty nice. And then Sword of the Air, he gets two shield tokens. I'm assuming that cancels damage coming in at him. All right, let's see what he's got. Pair twos, pair threes, and a six. Well, let's go ahead and do uh, a basic attack with a pair of twos to get some draw. And I could spend souls to boost that, but let's not do it yet. Let's just get this guy down to five. And I draw another six. Oh, and another two. Darn. Okay, um, the two is almost a run. So let's go ahead and do the six and another six to do another damage. And let's grab the card draw now. That's not going to help much. But the Monaga is down to four. Don't actually have enough souls to call for friendship for somebody else. So I'll just do a pair of threes. Get another card draw. Ah, it's not going to do anything for me. I'll do one less damage, get the Naga down to three, so they're both pretty hurt. And I'm just getting two souls again up to four. Bit of a ho-hum turn there for Rez. Our Luna, meanwhile, has three souls. For her basic, for two souls, she can draw a skill point card and reveal it. All your red skill point cards in this turn become the same number as the revealed card. Oh, so I could uh, make it much easier to, like, get Ragnar Spears and stuff, I guess. Dragon's Knight Will gets two plus one damage tokens or two plus shield tokens. And I guess you can use those on a future attack or again when you're attacked. And Ragnar Spear, uh, for four, when you defeat an enemy with a skill, shuffle all your cards and immediately play an extra turn. That is pretty neat. Right, but let's see what she's got. Oh, oh my gosh. This is some trash right here. All I've got is a pair of ones. And they wouldn't even let me draw anything. So you know what? She is going to spend... Uh, Three of her souls, because she's in the middle of the friendship pile. And I'm actually not entirely sure how other players' hands work. I think they draw back up to five. But then at the end of the round, you, like, reshuffle your whole deck anyway. So just to be sure we're doing it uh, by the book as much as we can, we'll take from Crow, And he's got two, 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 one, and five. So what have I got? Six, five, three, one. So if I did the two, I could play one, two, three. All red, except for that, too. Yeah, you know what? Let's take his drawing, too. Although, I'll leave him with no card draw at all. Oh, and I'll break up his three of a kind. Okay, never mind. I'll get a five to uh, have her get some extra card draw. 
And that has to go into play, and I think it goes into his play area, so he remembers he gets a soul as well. But I'll go ahead and do that pair to deal one damage. We'll try to finish off the Rubetta, get him down to one. Alright, so he'll keep that, and she gets one card draw. Oh, and there we go, that worked out. Let's do three of a kind. She'll get a card draw in a second. And that is two damage for her. Let's be optimistic and get the Naga down to one. Now they're both at one. And her card draw... Ah, darn. I thought she could have done something. Okay, so she is just getting two souls, but that's it for her. I guess she just kind of set things up for Crow, although his hand is some terribleness now. Oh, and that's right. The five is just down for him to get a soul. He doesn't actually get to play it. So all he's got is a three of a kind with one card draw, which will do three damage. Oh, man, I should have divided up her damage differently. Well, I'm going to kill the rock guy. He does two damage to everybody. The Naga just does four damage to one person, which certainly is terrible, but uh, won't <laughs> hurt all of us as much. Although, wait, wait, I forgot. We all have uh, defensive values. So you know what? Never mind. I am going to kill the Naga because our shields will block the majority of his attack. The crowd is going to get a gem for that. And hey, if my one card draws a one, I can kill the guy. Nope, that's a whole lot of nothing. But he does get three more souls. And hey, look at that. A monster actually attacks. Two damage to all targets. But like I said, they all have armor. Uh, Krau has two armor. Luna has two. Roz has two. So the grand sum of all your work, buddy, is Mercedes takes one damage. Well done, sir. And only Krau has a gem to buy as we go into the next round. Let's see. I guess I'm not even sure if you wanted fours or fives, but I want more card draw for him. So there I go. Okay, no penalty at the end of the round. No place has three or more guys. But we are going to spawn again. Oh my gosh, we get a mouse and a frog over there and a frog and a little soldier guy up there. So yeah, because that got a bit more serious. So clearly this place would be much easier to empty out. Uh, there's more guys here, but whichever one we attack, they are going to have three enemies or more at the end of the round, so we will suffer the negative effect. Well, let's say this one is minus one crystal, everybody. If we don't have crystals, I guess it doesn't happen. Whereas this one is minus soul. So I think I'm going to go against this tougher spot with four people. And we've seen the Naga, we've seen the Rubella, we've seen our mud frocks or flocks, whatever he was called. But these little rat dudes have a four life, no armor, but they are very fast. Only Mercedes will go before him, and he does a three damage to one randomly determined person. So Mercedes, do your thing. Oh my gosh, four fives and a three and a lot of card draw. So with a pair, she can do one damage to two targets. With three of a kind, she can do two damage to two targets. So one of those certainly sounds better. Let's do three blues to try to draw a bunch. Now she doesn't have six souls to do the Blazing Eye of Call, which would have been a bunch of extra damage with all these blues. So that'll be two damage to two. Okay, let's see this mighty soldier. I'm going to have him take two of it down to two. I'm going to bring the Rubella down to two as well. I'm not going to try to be fancy this time. I just want to kill him. And she gets three draw. Oh, she got a pair of sixes, a pair of threes. That's going to be two damage to two targets. She can finish off both the mouse and the Rubella. Good. Let's start off with the sixes. So that'll be one card draw. Let's go ahead and get it now. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. And remember, we could uh, pay one to make this piercing, but we don't need to because these guys don't have armor. The Mighty Mouse over here is not coming to save the day. He's down to one, so is the Rubella. And let's see, I've already used a bunch of sixes, so I guess like something with threes is more likely. So I'll do the fives to finish them both off. And that gets her two crystals, nice. And then she'll draw a four. So two threes and a four, she can just use the pair in a second. Okay, and she'll do the three and the three. And she'll hit the Flocks and the Naga, and she actually will spend a soul, I think, to cut through this guy's armor and make him actually take one of his six life. All right, low chance she'll do anything else. Oh my gosh, <laughs> all right, so. This is a great turn. Finish her off, but she's going to do uh, one damage each of them. She'll spend another soul to, again, actually damage the Phlox guy. So the Naga's at six. This guy's at four. Yeesh, how many souls did she get? One, two, three, four, five. Nice. She is ready to do some crazy damage next time, maybe. All right, there we go. Roll for Luna and Raz. And <laughs> he just always goes first. Okay, lots of blue. And, oh, he's got a run, two, three, four, and he's got a pair of sixes. Hmm. Now, I know if I get another six, I can do my better skill, hit everybody. So let's go for the run first, two, three, four. Oh, and if he spends two souls, he can draw two cards from somebody else's hand and then give them back. Well, let's go ahead and say Luna drew her hand. I think that's random, but sure, he'll go ahead and try it. So he'll get two cards from her. Ah, uh, gosh, how do I remember they're hers? Here, I'll just put them over here for now. He also gets two cards from the blues he played. Oh. Okay, well, her three and my three will be okay, I guess. But he's doing just one damage. So bring the Naga to five, because the other guy has too much armor. And now I guess he'll do a three with her three. I think he still draws a card from that. And that'll just be one more damage to the Naga. I guess I could spend souls to boost it. But now we got two of our characters left, so it should be okay. All right, so I still got a one from her. Now I've got a pair of sixes, a pair of fives. Well, 
Let's go for the drawing from the sixes. This is one more damage to the Naga. He's down to three. I'm going to draw two. Ooh, three, four, five. I still don't have a one, but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and do that. So that's one damage again. Not going to spend the souls. Now let's get the Naga down to two. And I get one card draw. Ah, even with her one. Well, it's okay. We'll just uh, stay there. So one, two, three, four. I don't think I count as having played the one. We'll put that back in her hand. So four souls for me. All right, and going to Luna, the Naga's down to two life, the Flock's to four. What she got? Whoa, that is a mishmash. <laughs> um, that's the only thing she can do to start. That's plus one to all her attacks. Oh, and if she spends two souls, she can get two plus attack tokens. Sure, we'll do that. There we go. I assume we can just use those in any future attack. She gets to draw one. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here we go. That'll be another card draw for her. She can do one damage. Ah, oh, darn it, she got another one. We'll just to be functional and get her a crystal. She'll spend one of her swords to make it two damage and finish off the Naga. And she only got three souls. I guess not too bad. All right, on Crow, what have you got going on? Nice, okay. Got some card draw, I like that. Start out with the two fours. Now this do one damage and, oh, okay. So the two gives me a piercing token so I can make a future attack piercing. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. But the one damage is wasted. Can't get through the guy's armor. I could draw two more. Darn it. Okay. Now let's go ahead and play these. I'm not going to use the piercing yet. Let's draw one card. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and play the six for a useless attack. Again, draw two cards. Ooh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, That's perfect. You guys got three life left. I'm gonna do three of a kind that I have an extra red I can discard to get plus one damage. So that'll do four and finish him off. And his reward is three healing. I assume it has to apply to the person who actually killed off the guy. Uh, so that card was just discarded, not played. We've got one red. I think just one more, two souls overall. Well, we cleared out this place, so maybe that guy gets a blue crystal, who knows? We'll give it to him anyway. But there were at least three enemies here, so, oh, crud. They all have crystals, so I guess they each lose one. That was worse than I thought. Well, Raz didn't have any, and Mercedes has two, so she'll still be able to buy something. And then we get a skull, which, again, will potentially make uh, other negative things happen, as you'll see. All right, Mercedes will buy something. Three, four, six. What does she like? I see a lot of threes and fours, oh, and actually a lot of sixes, too, and a lot of fives. Um, <laughs> let's go for the four for kind of the medium value for those runs, and also get a blue. And all right, we have our last spawn card before the boss shows up. Okay, we've got a mouse and a soldier over there, single mouse down there, and another one of the Naga over there. But I guess the only place I'm gonna care about is down here, because that's the only one with an encounter left to pop. And now because we have a skull, we place a plus one attack token on map tiles with yellow dragons. And that's everyone except the top one. So I think that means every monster in these places gets plus one attack. Especially worrisome with these mice attacking uh, faster than everyone except Mercedes. But in any case, we're going to fight them anyway. If we kill at least one, the encounter won't activate. Right, Mercedes, you got a ton of souls. Let's see what you can do. All right. Four, four, five, five, six. Okay. Maybe I'll do a run to start. Yeah, that's two damage to two targets. Ooh, if I spend a soul, if the targets have three life or less afterwards, then I get to take a card back from my plate area to my hand. Awesome. So let's hit both of these guys, get them down to two life. Use one soul to get a card back. Now look at that, it's the six to get another run, although I am drawing two again for those blue cards. Oh, we got three, four, five, and double six. Okay, I guess I'll do three, four, five now, and that'll finish both of them off. So they're both gone, and oh, they give healing, so she is fully healed. And she's drawn two again. Come on, give me a, oh, all right, um, sure. <laughs> so she'll go ahead and do that. I'll give her one draw. She's doing two damage to this guy, but with his shield, it goes down to one. And then she can't play anything else, but she's pretty happy with that. She's got three. So, wow, she's probably close to... Yeah, she's actually at full ten souls. All right, mice would have gone, but they're dead. Uh, Luna or... <laughs> okay, it's a tie. You know, I'm just going to give it to Luna just to be nice. Now what you got? Six, six, and one, one. Nothing too great. Let's play the one, one and get a card draw. And she could spend two to make all her reds become the number of one card she draws, which would basically guarantee her a three of a kind. But she's not getting through this guy's armor anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it yet. Draw didn't do much of anything, so that's another useless attack. She'll just get three souls, uh, not doing much this turn. How about you, Raz? You going to do better than that? 
pair of threes and a pair of sixes. Apparently not. Let's do the sixes first. That'll be one damage, not getting through. I'm not going to boost it yet, but I'll draw two. Oh, there we go. I can do a uh, run now. Although a run also only does one damage, so... I mean... Hmm. Let's just do the pair of threes. And sure, I will spend two souls to get two damage through with the boost. So this goes down to three. I get a single draw. Oh, all right. Ah, uh, sure. So let's do that. Do I want to boost it again? I mean, I'm about to get some more souls, right? So we'll do plus two more damage. He's down to one for a crowd to finish him off. And I'm getting three souls, so not too bad. And speaking of crowd, what you got, buddy? Oh, I got a run, okay. Which for him is two damage. That'll get the guy down to, uh, I think that's it, right? Yeah, he, he'll be dead with that, so sure. So I'll only get him one soul. And yeah, I don't think he'll spend to get the defense tokens. We haven't seen to need them yet. Well, that wasn't too hard, and I think that means one of us gains an artifact card. So artifact cards have two values. I'm not clear on whether they count for both or you pick one. I'm assuming you pick. And they also give you some bonus. So let's see, Crow's gonna get three, pick one. Heal three hit points to all, that seems ridiculous. Play all your red skill point cards as blue skill point cards, so that would let you draw a ton. Pick two cards from the enemy attack card deck and place them in the enemy attack discard. Nope. Let's go for this Dignus Orb. That is a dumb name, but it sounds like pretty powerful. All right, no crystals to spend, and I don't think anything additional happens with these guys. I mean, I'm really not sure what they all do just congregating on the board once the encounter has popped. I mean, they couldn't all attack you at the end of each round, right? Because that would just be too much damage and you would lose automatically. I'm not really sure. But anyway, Acolyte Nigal is appearing. Uh, this is about as much flavor text as you get for each event. So he's always down here with nobody helping him. That seems fine, so we just have to defeat him. Let's see, he's got 10 life, two shields, yikes. He's still slower than us. And you roll a die when he activates. And if you have a skull, then he's gonna also steal a soul. Wow, five damage. But I mean, I don't know, I think we have enough ways to get past armor that we'll probably still be able to kill him, right? Well, let's find out. Here's this bad boy. Let's take him on. All right, Mercedes, let's start with you. Five, five, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What was your crazy special? You have an extra X, that gives the number of blue skill point cards in your action area. Oh my gosh. So yes, this is gonna be good. You know what she's gonna do first? She's gonna go ahead and spend two with her friendship to get somebody else's card. Let's go to Raz, because that just grabbed his hand, and I see he has a bunch of sixes. I'm gonna grab one of those. She's gonna play it into his action area with her own six. And that's gonna deal one to a target. She can make it magical with one soul, which will still leave her with enough for a bigger attack. So the boss is down to nine life. And she gets to draw two cards. I'm trying to get as many blues as I can, right? Oh, although well, that didn't go great. Oh, well. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do uh, three fives. So that'll do two damage to two targets. And she's going to spend six souls. And she gets plus X equal to the blues in her skill area. I think that uh, the one from the ally still counts. So that's plus five damage. That jumps to seven. Minus is two shields. He's down to four life, if I did that all right. Take that, buddy. All right, and Luna or Rass, who gets a chance to try to finish this guy off? Of course it's Rass. All right, so I think he gets the card draw from the six, basically replacing what she took. Oh, he's got three sixes? Although, wait, that only does two damage to all targets. It's actually not going to get through his shields. Yeah, okay, okay, I guess I'll just do two of a kind. Let's spend two souls. That'll do three damage, which means I'll do one to him. This guy's not very good against the boss, is he? But I get to draw two, and okay, we got some more uh, things. So let's go ahead and do two of a kind again. Spend two souls, get one damage through. I'm gonna draw a single card, and yeah, I think that's gonna be it. I mean, I can play the fours to not hit him because I don't have enough souls left, and we'll stop there. So I got two souls, but I'm sure this guy will be dead, so it won't matter. All right, how about Luna? What's her best chance? I don't really know. I guess uh, doing her Dragon Might's Will or Dragon Knight's Will to get some boosts. Oh, this is a terrible draw. All right, so she'll go ahead and do just a plink of one damage just to, just to get a card draw. Oh, okay, there we go. I don't know if she'll have enough to actually do anything, but she'll go ahead and play this. So plus one to all her attacks. She'll spend two to get a plus two attack. Yeah, she can have it to four at a time. So there we go. She gets one card draw. Okay, and then she'll spend three friendship to take a card from a crow, I guess. Come on, I just want to do something. Oh, there's his uh, skill, which is a two or a three. Wait, she had a three and a one. So, a two. Oh, no, that's right. That doesn't actually attack. So, let's go with the one from him. Okay, so let's replay those. 
I'll give her a card draw before I forget. And she'll go ahead and use all three of these, so it becomes four damage, and oh, I guess that's it. Okay. <laughs> We get an epilogue. Raz heads to the Sanctum and instead of destroying the Archdemon's Might, learns from the World Tree that the Archdemon's Might is similar to his energy and converts it into the power of creation and absorbs it. Well, of course he does. What else would you do uh, with the Archdemon's Might? I uh, know not at all. So one player gets an artifact card. I guess you have some campaign rewards you can pass along. But alright, that was Epic 7 Arise. What do I think? Uh, let's see. So first of all, the biggest thing, uh, playing the cards for battling. I think it's kind of interesting, like trying to set up the combos, deck building to make combos happen more, managing your soul resources. These combats didn't seem that interesting, but I think if there were more varied enemies or they were more of a challenge, it might be better. So uh, there is some possibility there. As for the enemies themselves, as you saw, I kind of destroyed them. Um, I wish they were like faster so their speed would actually matter. Um, we never even drew a single attack card. We took one damaging attack the entire game. So that's not great. It seems like the player armor values are too high, so that's all a little weird. And kind of all on a similar topic, I'm not sure how other scenarios work, but for this one, I don't really see how player count would be balanced. Because you saw these enemies just kept popping up, and they said for, like, solo, just control two characters. How would that be balanced? Uh, how would I deal enough damage to keep up with the enemies popping to defeat the boss if I only had two characters? Now, it's fine for attacking, like them attacking you, because if spots aren't filled and they attack there, the attack is wasted. But that also seems kind of unsatisfying, right? Like, especially, I guess I would just put my guys on the one and the four. So two-thirds of attacks would totally miss us. Seems a little wonky to me. I'm also not really sold by the narrative of the game. I mean, <laughs> I guess if you've played the app and you know what the heck they're talking about, this might be fine. But these little blurbs don't really mean much, don't really give enough context. I'm not saying I want, like, some giant narrative book, but a little bit more would be nice. And I definitely hope they keep cleaning up their rule book because I couldn't quite tell how to play. I had to ask them a lot of questions and I still didn't feel confident. Uh, so not a great sign, but hopefully that'll get fixed. And finally, I know this is mostly a personal opinion. And I know that this is from an app game and they have to kind of match the art style there. But, I mean, come on guys. <laughs> I'm a big anime fan. I love anime. I watch so much anime. And the thing I like the least is uh, kind of the fan service, you know, or the cheesecake. Like these people with bodies and clothes that they should not really be wearing. Uh, so I just find all this kind of dumb. And then, you know, as nice as the miniatures are, having the miniatures represent those silly body types, I'm sure it's gonna excite somebody. Uh, but for me personally, it makes me like the game less instead of more. So yeah, Epic Seven Arise. I cannot say I would recommend this one with confidence yet, but they might make it better. They might keep improving. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But thanks for watching. Hope that even with kind of the rules lack of clarity that you at least got an idea of how the game is playing at this moment. And hope you had fun. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.